But, and it neatly leads on to another sort of aspect of what uh, we were all talking about uh, before today when we were going to discuss this panel, is about outsourcing. Shipping as an industry, compared to many other industries, whether it's real estate or I mean, so many others, is not, not much is actually outsourced. Um, why is that? And why, uh, you know, is there going to be a moment where suddenly um, with the sort of paradigm will change where owners will be seeking as a proportion far greater outsourcing and management. Do you see that on the horizon? Let's start with you, Finn. I think I look at 16% as, a, as an opportunity, mm -hmm. not a threat. Uh, so, uh, so I think there are lots of opportunities out there. Yes, I think there is a big change. And uh, I haven't been into the ship management business for long, but I've been I'm coming from the ship owning side. Yep. And, uh, and what I see in the, let's say, two, three year period I've been with the OSM is that we have had we have very different companies now knocking on our doors. Uh, and the companies are not, uh, are not necessar necessarily only small shipping companies, it's also the big shipping companies. Why? Uh, I think that the, 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 the sort of the reasons or the rationales are, are very different from company to company. Some companies do it for strategic reasons. They would like to devote their people, their time, their efforts to, to other topics, such as, for example, the commercial part of their business. We see companies approaching us, for example, because probably they have an idea that they see that their, their business is very dynamic. They sometimes need to build down their fleet to reduce the number of fleet. They would like us to handle the ship management side. So, and that's one of the differences we have seen, is that we have sort of gone in and, 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 and fully sort of done partnerships with our, with our uh, ship owners, like we, for example, did with Christian Gerardius in Bergen, where we took over everything and, 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 and formed a, a partnership with our technical management, as well as the crew management, insurances, and other things. So, so strategic reasons, I think complexity, increased complexity, costs, uh, overall costs, and, and the other reasons that I mentioned are, so, so I see that, I'm quite optimistic because I see that we have a very different, or a much, let's say, and a very improved customer portfolio also ahead of us. So, uh, John, 16% at the moment, end of the decade, very complex regulations coming in, different types of owners, frankly, coming that, that are not traditional owners. What's the percentage that is outsourced by the end of the decade? By the end of the decade, hopefully yeah. double from 15% and up to 30%. I think it's going to become extremely challenging for many owners actually to stay on top of all the regulatory issues as well. So it's an uh, it's important part for the, for the ship managers to deal with that. And then we also have all the other parties that are part of the maritime cluster on it with, uh, with uh, oil majors, dealing with the oil majors, dealing with their requirements, etc. So, uh, yeah, I would say that that percentage would double from now. And uh, running the Mighty V Group, that potentially would be, what, it would be well over a thousand something ships, if that were to come true? I mean, how, how optimistic are you on, the, on, on shipping's willingness to outsource? Because, you know, we always think originally with ship management, a lot of it was benchmarking, but increasingly that's not the case, is it? No, I, I, I'm like Finn, I've grown up in, in ship owning, so I came into this uh, industry as a client, and it was quite refreshing. Um, I was quite surprised about the 16 number, uh, quite frankly, because if you compare to any other big balance sheet industries, it just doesn't make any sense. Uh, so, is it the emotional uh, part of it that uh, Cooper mentioned, perhaps? I think there's a multitude of reasons for it. Uh, I do, however, believe that it will come from a different place than just winning over. Uh, ship owners to outsource in the traditional way. I, I simply think we need to change the model of how we think about outsourcing. Uh, first and foremost, because we only have uh, this amount of, 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 uh, of cash to spare on shipping. Uh, and so uh, it's not going to be less complicated for all of us to drive our businesses. Uh, so having the lowest cost to serve models uh, throughout the industry, um, not only ship management, is, is I think a North Star. For, for all of us, um, and we can talk about that later on the, on the ESG side. But, but I think that is what is going to drive uh, ship management. And then I think um, one of the other surprising elements, and, and I'm not saying this from an American perspective, I'm saying it from a humble perspective, is that it seems like we are in this transactional prism um, uh, where we blow by blow have to be uh, in, a, in an overwatch situation from some, some clients and, and some not. 
And I, I just think we have to go out. I think we have to trust the process. We have to audit. You know, I come from, from an oil and gas industry lately, and you know, we are very good at auditing uh, without it being interference. Uh, um, and I, I just think we need to embrace that because there is only this amount of cash, and, 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 and that has to be spent wisely. So I, you know, I don't know if, if they're going to double. I think it's great, it's ambitious, let's, let's go for it. But I think there are so many ships coming in uh, right now uh, to the industry, so just accompanying them. Is, is, is a growth in the first place.